record. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so um, good news that chapter 17 is like fairly easy compared to chapter 15 and 16. So I'm excited to teach this topic because <laughs> hopefully you guys can understand it better. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's use pink. Okay, so chapter 17 is about capacitors. So capacitor is one of the components for your electric circuit. So kita belajar, kita dah belajar pasal electrons, right? We talked about electrons, we talked about, sorry, we talked about charges. We talked about charges, we talked about electric field, and then now we are talking about capacitors. Capacitor is one of the components in your electric circuit that is coming in chapter 18. So what we are learning currently is going to build up our knowledge for chapter 18, okay? So capacitors is one of them, one of them. And capacitors, Untuk this topic, we will learn about parallel plate capacitors, charging and discharging a capacitor, capacitor arrangement. Now, the thing to note about uh, capacitors, um, parallel plate capacitor ni, okay, I think it's quite, it's bearable. This part is the part that students always find it confusing. So when I'm teaching this subtopic, I want you guys to pay attention to this one. So, but they're a little bit confusing. It's not hard, but it's just a little bit confusing. And this guy, uh, I think it's easy lah, okay? So overall, I think this is the topic that you should focus on because confusing skip. All right, moving on. So capacitors is an electric component which can be found in electric circuit, in most electric appliances, blah, blah, blah. I don't like reading this stuff. It is a device that can store charges. So important thing to know is it capacitors store charges. And this is how it looks like. It's very, very small. It's like the tip of my finger. It's that small. Okay. Um, korang tak sempat buat lab ni. Kesian. Tak apa. Nanti kalau belajar EE boleh ambil ni. You can take electrical engineering course like me. <clears throat> so basically it is made up of two parallel plates, conductors separated at a small distance apart by dielectric materials. Okay. Abaikan dulu dielectric material ni. Just looking at this diagram, if you guys can remember, what does it look like from chapter 16? Have we seen this diagram before? Have we seen it? I think we have. I, I said this guy is Pumbaris, remember? Pumbaris of charges. Ingat tak? Tak ingat? Tak ingat tu. Baru je belajar. Ya Allah. Okay. So I said, uh, this guy is pembaris positive charge, this guy pembaris negative charge. So here we are taking that knowledge that we have learned from previous chapter and we are going to talk about capacitors here. So we have a parallel plate that is made out of positive charges, a parallel plate that is made out of negative charges. When we have positive and negative, one will be, kejap, saya punya anak lagi sing Tengah main game. Jangan, jangan. Rizal, can you like turn off? It's very noisy. Turn off sound. Don't screaming, okay? Okay, I'm back. Okay, so if you guys remember, one is high potential. What is high potential? It's always associated with positive charge. And this guy is low potential. Okay, and this is negative charge. And when we have a positive and a negative, we have electric field going from positive and it is terminated at the negative. So this is our E. Ah, mesti ingat macam, oh chapter 6 kena habis, bestnya. Tak, belajar balik. So high potential, low potential. When we have a net positive, a net negative, we will have electric field. When we have electric field, we will also have potential difference. Potential difference because this is high and this is low. So the distance is, there is a potential difference lah. So these are the things that you need to look for in this chapter lah. Kita akan, kita akan go through again. Okay, so <clears throat> that was just like an intro to remind you guys that is a little bit of chapter 16. So, um, tadi saya cakap abaikan dielectric material because here we talked about when it is, when the plates are between air. But to increase, to improve 
the capacitor's uh, performance, sometimes they put in dielectric material. So what is dielectric material? So dielectric material can be uh, paper, it can be, I don't know, kejap, let's see. There is a slide on that. Okay, I do. So it can be air. The air is what we have learned so far because we have two parallel plates. One is positive, one is negative. Between them is nothing, so it's just air. And we can put in oil or liquid dielectric capacitor, sorry, or oil or liquid dielectric. And we can put in mica. Mica is like a type of glass. Good. Rasanya mica, mica. I think it's glass. And then we also have ceramic and ceramic macam yang tembikar tu kan? And then paper. So these are the things that can be put in between the capacitor. And these materials need to be insulative. It cannot be conductive. They need to be insulative. Because why? Because if they were conductive, okay, kita dah ada metal plates kat sini kan? This is our metal plate. If we have another metal plate, then the charges can easily move, right? Then there will not be, hey, you saw, there will not be a potential difference. There will not be electric field because all the charges are like moving about. So you can't create that potential difference or that electric field. Hello, can you stop? Okay. And then, so the material in between, you saw, please. I'm yeah. teaching. Okay, so the material in between the metal plates should be insulative. So that is one thing to remember. Sorry, I'm not saying it. Okay, so this is metal plate. Metal plates are conductive and then dielectric material or the material in between the metal plates should be insulative. Ataupun tak conduct uh, electrons lah, tak conduct charges. Okay, it's not conductive. So that's an intro on capacitors. <clears throat> is it important to know? Yes, it's important to know because the structure will uh, influence the performance and sometimes they will ask you, how do you improve the performance of a capacitor? How do you increase uh, the capacitance? How do you decrease the capacitance? So knowing the structure is uh, important. So you can either, nanti kita akan cakap lagi lah pasal ni. Okay, so that was just an intro. Oh my god. So I'm back. Okay, so pengacau dah di eliminate. So moving on. Okay, so capacitors um, have two conducting plates that consist of neutral atom. Am I still recording? Yes. Consists of neutral atom. So if you have a plate, you have a um, plate, right? You have like a metal plate. Okay, so when it is when you're not doing anything to it, it is always in neutral state. Yeah. So let's say I have like my, I don't have something conductor here. Okay, I don't have anything. So let's say I'm holding um pembaris. I am neutral. Pembaris tu pun mesti neutral juga because I'm not doing anything to that pembaris. Okay. So this is the case here. When I'm not doing anything, it should always be in neutral state. What is neutral state? Neutral state means that they have the same amount of positive and negative. Same amount of positive and negative. Now, what happens if I add some negative charges to this plate? Now, this plate will have a net negative charge. Net negative charge simply means that it has more more electric, sorry, more negative charges compared to positive. It does not mean that 
all the at the all the charges are negative it does not mean that a net negative charge means that this plate has more negative charges compared to positive charges if i say this guy has a net positive charge it means the same thing i have more protons sorry i have more positive charges compared to negative in this plate that is what it means it does not mean that semua kena negative, semua kena positive. Eh? But here, uh, this diagram shows positive, 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 positive negative, negative. Tu untuk uh, memudahkan kita tengok je. In reality, it's just a net positive charge. Net negative charge. Which means that, uh, what I have told you before, it means that the number of positive charges is more in this plate compared to the negative and the number of negative charges in this plate is more compared to the positive charges in this second plate. That is what it means. But for simplicity, kita akan cakap, okay, all of this is positive, all of this is negative. Okay, but in the real situation, it's not like that. Okay, so this is just diagram sahaja. Okay, um, what is important to take away from this slide? You need to know what does neutral mean? What does net negative charge mean? What does net negative positive charge mean? This is, um, you need to understand this for you to understand the coming parts. Eh? So neutral means sama, the same amount of positive and negative. Positive net charge means you have more positive than negative. But negative net charge, you have more negative than positive. It's easy, right? <clears throat> okay. When a battery is conduct connected to that neutral plate, so you have this neutral plate and then you connect to a you connect it to a battery uh, kita anggap ni neutral dulu eh so this is supposed to be neutral first and then you connect it to a battery now when your battery has a positive and a negative the positive is the side where it is longer the negative is shorter so this guy this plate is connected to the positive part of the battery this guy is connected to the negative part of the battery. So, <clears throat> so we can say that this plate will be negatively charged and this plate will be positively charged. Okay. When a battery is disconnected, the charges remain on the plates. Electric field exists between the plates, which indicate the existence of a potential difference. Okay. And I told you when we have a higher potential here and a lower potential here, we are actually creating an electric field between the plates and which means that we have delta V. Okay. If both plates are then connected to the conductor, the current will flow through the conductor until the charges on the plates are fully neutralized. Now, kita di, kita dah cakap, this guy has a higher potential, this guy has a lower potential. Now, I am connecting it to a bulb or a resistor. Okay, boleh jadi bulb, boleh jadi resistor. Anything that is conductive, you can put it there. So, what happens is the, the electrons from this part, the negative charges will move back to here and everything will be, dia akan move sampai dua-dua jadi neutral. So what does neutral mean? It means that they have the same amount of positive and the same amount of negative. Okay. Any questions so far? Is everyone okay? Uh, doctor, I have a question. Okay. Uh, uh, from the previous slide, actually, uh, doctor say that if first it will be neutral and then if negative charges are added into it which means if there is net negative charge then it's uh, negatively charged right yes. so both plates are independent right which means if there is addition that means if there is independently net charge then they will change their charge right uh, if there is independently net uh, like so if one plate has changed uh, in it's negatively charged already from neutral and became negatively charged, mm -hmm. does that mean that the other plate will become positively charged or still neutral? Okay, so I have not uh, told you um, specifically how it happens. Okay, let's let's go over that. Okay, so let's take a look at this diagram. I know, not this diagram. Um, the other diagram, not this one. Where is it? Oh. 
Oh, itu part charging. Okay, um, tadi Divya yang tanya. Was it Divya? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, your, uh, it's a good question, but it is uh, in the next subtopic. Can we go over that uh, later? Ah, okay, okay, doctor. Okay. All right. Thank you, doctor. Welcome. Okay, so uh, Divya asked a really good question. So she's asking, how do, how do we make... If this guy becomes net negative, does that mean this guy immediately becomes net positive? Is it, I mean, I think Divya is asking, are they influenced or are they not? Are they doing this independently? Okay, that's a good question. They are actually dependent on each other. Um, I'll tell you roughly, eh? nanti kita akan go through in detail lagi. So what happens is that it only electrons can move. Protons, I mean, the positive charge cannot move, right? It, only the negative charges can move, actually, when we are talking about electricity. So what happens is that, I should start from this diagram, actually. What happens is that, um, the net, I told you, the negative, the only the negative can move, right? So this guy will move. Let's say this is negative, this is positive battery. Okay, so this will become, kita akan assume dia akan jadi positive, this guy will be negative. So, kita akan cakap, okay, so only the negative charges can move. So, if I want this guy to be negative, sorry, if I want this guy to be negative, which means that this guy has to move its negative charges to the other side. So, let me use green. So, this guy will be donating electrons i mean charge negative charges negative e leaving behind the positives now if this guy is donating negative charges which means that the positive will be greater than the negative inside this plate so it will have a net positive where does this electrons these ch negative charges go it will go to this guy so now this guy is receiving the negative charges and it will have more negative charges compared to the more negative charges compared to the negative. So now this dude will have a net negative. So that is how it's done. Only the negative charges will move and one will donate, one will receive. Who does the work? It's the battery. The battery does the work. Battery ni said, okay, I want this guy to be positive. I want this guy to be negative. I'm going to supply you some energy to do that. So, they can provide the energy and they will move the electron. I mean, the negative charges will move according to the energy provided by the battery. So, the work done is done by the battery. So, if the battery is not there, this will not happen because there is not enough energy to move the electrons without any force. So the battery gives that force, okay? Is that okay? Is everyone okay with this concept so far? Yes. Okay, yeah? so one is going to donate. When I donate, I am actually letting go negative charges, which means that I am going to be more positive. If I am receiving negative charges, I will be more negative. So I will become net negative. Okay, so the battery does the work to get uh, to make the plate positive and to make the other plate negative how do we determine which side is positive which side is negative you look at the battery this side is positive this side is negative which means that this plate will be positive and the other side will be negative okay i hope that's okay for everyone uh, there yep uh if the capacitor have uh one of it have become net positive and uh, they become net negative Mm -hmm. And then we remove the circuit immediately. Do the capacity stay in the net positive and net negative? Yes. And we will talk more on that. That's a good question as well. <laughs> so everyone's like going advanced, in advance. Okay. Nanti kita akan cakap pasal ni. When, what happens when we remove the battery? Okay. Okay. So capacitance of a capacitor. We talked about how to induce the delta V between the plates, right? We have a delta P, electric potential difference, delta V. But here they just label it as V because the delta V does not change unless you change the distance. So we are assuming that it's just going to be V. Tapi sebenarnya delta V lah, okay? It's the difference. And then we have um, this equation, C, capacitance. C is capacitance. Okay. 
Okay, capacitance is Q over V. The Q is the charge, the ratio of magnitude of charge Q on either conductor plate to the magnitude of the potential difference. Now, why does it say either plate? It's just saying, okay, if you calculate the net positive charges over here, it will be the same as the net negative charge over here. So the value of Q is the same, only the signs are different. Why is that? Can anyone guess? Okay, I'm going to repeat my question. Eh? So the equation is C, capacitance is equal to Q over V. V is the electric potential difference between the plates that I mentioned earlier. Whereas Q, this value of Q is actually the net charge on the plate. And they said the net charge on the plate should only, you can just, call, you can just account for uh, either the positive or the negative. It will be the same. Why should it be the same? This Q1 is equal to this Q2. Why should it be the same? That's my question. No one? We just talked about it. It's the... Yep. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll let you guys figure it out. Good. Should I let you guys figure it out or should I tell you? Is it because of the mass? No. It's, um, it, it's about uh, the negative charges that is donated and received. It is in equilibrium? It is in equilibrium. Oh. Mm, okay, I'm, I'm just going to tell you the answer. So if I am donating 10, okay, uh, this dude, okay, sorry, I need to add them. So it's messy. So if this dude is donating 10, eh, hello, mana pen? Okay, I'm donating 10, 10 negative E. Eh? This dude will get uh, 10 negative E. And they, this guy will become net 10 negative E. This guy will become positive 10 E or 10 positive E. So if I'm donating uh, 10, 10 negative charges, I will be positive 10. I will be, um, I will have 10 positive charges extra. Because in a, uh, at first, I started off neutral, right? Okay. So, 5 positive, 5 negative over here. This is first plate. Second plate is 5 positive, 5 negative. Okay. So, I'm not, I'm not doing anything to the plates yet. So, we are neutral. Yay. So, now I connect it to a battery. Uh, okay, battery. So, this I want this dude to be positive, this dude to be negative. Uh, for this guy to be positive, it needs to donate. Okay, let's say I want to donate. I'm feeling very generous today, so I'm going to donate three. So I'm donating three. So this leaves me with two. I'm do donating three, right? Donating three negative E, which means that this other dude will receive three. Sorry, positive rather. Right three uh, negative, right? Okay, so bang. Okay, I'm donating three negative. This dude gets the three negative. Now I have a eight negative, five positive. Five positive, eight negative, which means that I have extra minus three. Whereas this guy, I have extra positive three. How do I calculate for the extra? I just told it. Sorry, this is not it. 5 minus 5 minus 3, I get minus 3. 5 minus 2, I get positive 3. So we can see that when I donate 3, I become positive 3. When I receive 3 minus 3, I am minus 3. So it doesn't matter which plate you are looking at, either positive or negative plate, the value will be the same. So if this guy is three, this guy is three. If this guy is five, this guy is five. So I just need to know, okay, what's the number of Q in this plate? So it will be the same. So you just need to know one plate on your value and that is fine to calculate for the capacitance of the whole capacitor. 
this whole thing is a capacitor. Eh? Is that okay? Is everyone okay with that? Faham ke? Any conclusions um, so far? Um, so everyone's okay, eh? all right. So that was the concept. Now let's look at the equation. So the SI unit is farad. Farad, um, it's a capital F. Okay, this is the capital F. It is also C over Coulomb over volt. Okay, so let's just use farad because this C is Coulomb. This is capacitance. It's kind of confusing. So let's just use farad. So capacitance is equal to Q over delta V or just V. And it is in farad. A farad is, one farad is very large. So typically the values are microfarad or picofarad or um, do we have none? Nanofarad is not typical. Selalunya micro lah, microfarad eh. That is the most common um, value for a capacitor. What is micro? Micro is 10 times 10 to the 6. Pico is 10 times 10. Sorry, times 10 to the minus. Pico, pico. Yeah, 12. 6. Nano pun ada lah patutnya kan. So nano is 9. So this is nanofarad. Okay, so that is that. That's the equation. C, sorry, C is equal to Q over V. And there is another equation for capacitor, which is C is epsilon naught area over distance, okay? which is also equal to Q over V. So this is interchangeable. So uh, epsilon naught, the value is 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farad per meter. When you times it with area, area is in meter squared. Distance is in meter. Cancel out, you are left with meter. And then when you multiply meter with farad over meter, you just get farad. So C is still farad. Okay? So this is F over M. This M cancels out with this M. You are left with farad. So again, the equation is C equals to epsilon naught. Area over distance equals to Q over V. What is the area in this equation? So the area in this equation is actually the area of the plate. The area of the plate. Okay, so plate ni sebenarnya rupa dia macam ni lah. Plate tak. It's like a square. Uh, I think you guys understand what I'm saying. So this is the area. This is A. And the distance. Wow, cantik lah pula lukisan saya hari ni. Saya ni buruk. Okay. Oh, dah buru dah. Okay. So the area, sorry, the distance between these plates are the distance D here. Okay. So this is D, this is A. So how do I increase a capacitance, uh, the capacitance for a capacitor? So I can increase the capacitance by increasing A or decreasing D. So it needs to be very close together for capacitor to be increased, the capacitance to be increased or it should be very um, large in area. So the area should be larger if I want my capacitance to be higher. Okay, so just looking at this equation, I can ask you, how do you increase the capacitance for a capacitor? I can increase the area or I can reduce the distance between the plates. There is another way to increase capacitance and we will look at that later. I told you about dielectrics, so that is part of it. So another way to increase capacitance is putting in something, an insulative material or a dielectric in between the metal plates to increase the capacitance. Okay. So that is, uh, we have two equations now. C equals to Q over V and C is equal to epsilon naught, a constant times area over distance. Okay. So, oh, sorry, capacitors with dielectrics. A dielectric is an insulating material that can be sandwiched, blah, blah, blah. We know this already. So the capacitance is multiplied by a factor K. Um, so this is a K that is, uh, how do I say, italized, it, italicized, I, italics, italics. Oh, nak sebut mana. So this K is like in italics lah. How do you say this? I don't know. Eh? <laughs> okay, so I don't know how to say that. Uh, Italicize. Okay, you, you guys know what I'm saying. So the K is not like a regular K. Eh? It's like very fancy K. 
So that is your K for cap the capacitance punya dielectric constant, the fancy K. So the fancy K times epsilon naught times area over D. Previously, we talked about this same equation. This same equation, C equals to epsilon naught, area over distance. Now it is multiplied by fancy K. So what does fancy K mean? Fancy K is when you put in a dielectric material between the plates. So fancy K is one when it is air, which is we're not putting in anything at all between the plates. So when you're not putting in anything at all between the plates, so it is just air K equals to one, which is just C naught equals to epsilon naught A over D or just C. You can just say C. But when you put in something other than air, the K becomes greater than one so you need to put in that value. So now it's a fancy K epsilon naught A over D. Okay. So that K refers to the dielectric material. When you have a K that is greater than one, then obviously your capacitance will be greater. Um, your, cap your capacitor with a dielectric will be greater than a capacitor with just air. Okay. So dielectric constant is also, the fancy K is also C over C0. C0 is capacitance with air. This is capacitance with dielectric. Okay, it's pretty simple because we have seen this one. C equals to fancy K epsilon naught A over T, which is simply KC, KC0, sorry. And this is equal to C. This guy is C0. C0 is capacitance with air, right? So C over C naught is just fancy K. Okay, so that is pretty straightforward, I think. So here is a table of dielectric constants with respect to various substances. So vacuum is one or air is close to one. Uh, typically it's a vacuum uh, in the capacitor, eh? but capacitor ni dia akan seal. Uh, so it's like a component that is sealed. So inside it's a vacuum, but we can just say it's air. The value is close. Okay, so we have Teflon. Uh, I don't know what Teflon is. It's 2.1, benzene, paper, ruby, mica, neoprene. Uh, neoprene ni yang kalau korang pergi gym, um, dumbbell tu dia salut dengan neoprene. Dia macam ada grip but it's kind of smooth. So that is that material. 6.7, methyl alcohol and then you have water. So water is like the highest dielectric constant. So rendam metal plate dalam air. Uh, you have to connect to a battery. Don't know how you're going to do that without injuring yourself. So, but that is how you can increase the capacitance. Okay, leave that to the professionals. Kita nak belajar dulu. Okay, so moving on. So capacitors with dielectrics. Previously, I told you when we have two plates and one is high potential, one is low potential, positive, negative, we will have an electric field and we also will have a, a potential difference okay at this point I think I already said this like 10 times okay please remember this okay so high to low your arrow terminates at the negative or your electric field terminates at the low potential now what this is when we have air in between the plates what happens when we have dielectric in between the plates so the electric field, dia agak terganggu lah kat sini eh. So, previously it was like happily moving from positive to negative. Yay, I'm being terminated at negative. But when I put in a dielectric material, the E is like bothered, like disturbed, right? So it's disturbed when there is a material other than air. So what happens now? Okay, so when I have an electric field, Okay, um, how do I draw this nicely? Okay, I will try my best. Okay, so remember E, hey, hello, I think I baru nak try my best. Okay, so E goes from positive to negative, right? Okay, so we are starting off with this dude over here. Okay, this is our regular E without the dielectric yet. Now I put in the dielectric and the dielectric uh, is a material, right? It's a material with neutral charge. Mula-mula lah. 
Okay, dear neutral type. Remember, if I'm not doing anything, it will start off with neutral. What does neutral mean? Positive and negative is equal. Okay, so this dude has positive and negative that are equal. And when I place it inside a place, and I place it in between the plates where one is positive, one has high potential, one is low potential, this material will reorganize its charges, will reorganize its atoms, eh? atoms are the charges, eh? will reorganize its atoms so that the negative will move towards the net positive. That's what they attracted. Negative, uh, light, sorry, opposite charges attract, right? So they will reorganize the atoms so that the negative side of the atom is facing the positive potential. And the positive side of the atom will be uh, facing the negative. Okay, so if you guys start pressing lagi, this is the negative facing the positive, positive facing the negative, positive facing the negative, positive facing the negative, positive facing the negative, also negative facing the positive. Okay, so when you have this rearrangement of the atoms, atom ni pusing-pusing je, dia tak, dia tak adalah bergerak macam liquid because this is solid, right? They can only move about, dance about, so they can only rotate themselves. So they re, 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 drama memusingkan diri sendiri, wow. Drama memusingkan diri sendiri so that they face the right people, right people, right charges. So what happens now, I have a positive here and a negative here, and I am actually inducing another electric field. Dun, dun, dun. So this gets like, oh my god, dah ada E, dah susah dah. Tiba-tiba ada another E. So we have E induced. This is called electric field that is induced by the dielectric. Okay. Tadi E kita from positive to negative. This is our E not, our initial E. Putting in the dielectric, they re reorganize their atoms. Not reorganize, they re pusing pusing so positive faces negative, negative faces positive. E always go, goes from positive to negative, right? So I have another E over here. So this is my E induced. Now we have another equation associated with a capacitor that has dielectric material in between the plates. So this E effective is equal to E naught E0 is the initial electric field minus the E induced, okay? Or you can say uh, the capacitance, sorry, the dielectric constant is equal to E0 over E effective. This is also equal to C over C0, okay? Terbalik, eh? So E0 up here, E effective down here, C up here, C0 up here. So E0 is always greater than E effective. Okay, E dot is always greater than E effective, which means that this guy will be greater than one. C is always greater than C naught. This guy is also greater than one. So, of course, the electric constant can greater than one lah because it's not air. Okay. So that is your third equation, fourth, third. This is number three, number four. <clears throat> I think the equations are pretty easy. You just have to remember it. Okay, we talked about this one. So we have different types of dielectrics. We also talked about the table, yang ada mica, neoporin, yang gym, whatever itu. Okay, so energy stored in a capacitor. Okay, before that, um, what time is it? Oh, the 50 minutes dah, lamanya. Before that, let's do a little recap on what we have learned so far, because it's kind of a lot, I know. So we talked about plates, we have a battery, this is a metal plate, we start off neutral. We have a battery, battery is positive here, negative the other side, this guy becomes positive potential, net negative potential. And when we have positive to negative, I will have E. We have E and my capacitor is made. This is basically my capacitor, C. So the equation for C is equal to, this is C naught, epsilon naught, area over distance. What area? The area of the plates and the distance between the plates. So this is D. This is A. 
okay that is an a and d and <clears throat> uh, if i put in a dielectric material this equation will become fancy k epsilon naught a over d there's another equation for that c is equal to q over v v is the potential difference q is the number of charge on either plate number of charge on either plate let's say this is a positive 10 positive net 10 negative net 10 i just need to know it's 10 doesn't matter which plate i'm looking at the value will be the same so i'm just going to plug in 10 okay tak payah positive tak payah negative capacitors does not have positive or negative so doesn't matter eh? <clears throat> okay so that is that uh, uh, we talked about e sorry fancy k fancy k is c over c naught is greater than one when you use something other than air if it is air then c naught over c naught is just equal to one fancy k is equal to one okay so your equation does not require the k so if you put in a dielectric put in the fancy k into your equation Okay, and then we talked about E effective is equal to E naught minus E induced. What is E induced? This is the E inside the dielectric. Okay, this is between the plates. The one where we assume that it is in air. Between plates, air. Okay, so obviously E naught will be greater than E induced. So to calculate for fancy k, it should be E not over E effective. So this will be greater than 1 if we have a dielectric. So everything is easy so far. Just a bunch of equations and uh, we talked about how they become negative and how it becomes positive, which is you donate and receive. Sorry, this guy is donating, this guy is receiving E. Okay, so that is what we have learned so far in two minutes. Okay, so now we are going to talk about energy stored in a capacitor. So energy uh, is equal to, in this case, it's potential energy. Yeah? So this guy is potential energy. So it is U. Don't like green. So let's potential energy is equal to U and it is 1 over 2 Q squared. The charge in either plate squared over uh, C, C is capacitance, yeah, C is capacitance, not the charge. So Q is the charge squared over capacitance. So it is also equal to 1 over 2 CV squared or equal to 1 over 2 QV. Uh, so this one is a little bit complicated. Okay, so this is like number 5, I think. Okay, so kenapa um, u equals to 1 over 2 q squared over c is equal to cv squared or 1 over 2 qv. They substituted this equation c equals to q over v into the equation. Let's do it. So u equals to 1 over 2. So if q squared, I'm just going to leave that there. c is q over v. So I can cancel out this guy. So this guy needs to go on the top. So it becomes QV. Yay. One. We got one, right? And then the other one is 1 over 2 Q squared over C. So how do I substitute this one? Uh, let's substitute Q. I want C. I want to eliminate Q. So substituting for Q, um, I will get Q equals to CV. So CV squared 1 over 2 over C. So C, C squared, V squared. Um, squared. Well, so this becomes 1 over 2 CV squared. Yay. Okay, basically it's just using this little equation. Substitute into this guy whether you want to eliminate the Q. Here we eliminated the Q. And this over here, we eliminated the C. So rearrange this, whatever. If you want to el el eliminate, sorry. If you want to eliminate Q, you should put in Q equals to CV. If you want to eliminate C, you should just use C equals to Q over V. Okay? I think you know this. It's just substitution. Pretty easy. Mm.
1 over 2, q squared over c. Okay, so first exercise. A certain parallel, I'm not going to tutup solutions, but it's pretty easy. A certain parallel, parallel plate capacitor consists of two plates, each with area 250 centimeter squared. So that's your first information. Separated by a 0 0.5 centimeter air gap. Okay, so that is your D, air. So air, the fancy K should be equal to one or you can just not put it there. If the capacitor is connected across a 450 volt source, so your V is equal to 450. <clears throat> your potential difference between the plates, okay? Because why? Because kita connect dengan battery. If this battery has 450 volt, the potential difference between them will be 450 volts. Positive, negative. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so that is your uh, uh, voltage. Find the capacitance. So capacitance is, we have the A, we have the D. Just substitute. So here they changed it to meter squared and the centimeter to meter. So times 10 to the minus 2. This guy is squared, so times 10 to the minus 2 squared. So times 10 to the minus 4. 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farad per meter times 250 times 10 to the minus 4 meter squared. This is area. This is distance. Okay. So... Uh, use your calculator, you should get this answer. Pretty easy. The only thing that you can mess up this kind of question is not converting the centimeter to meter. Remember, always SI units. Eh? Because this is not ratios. This is equation. Equation can look at SI. Kalau ratio, centimeter over centimeter, boleh lah. But this is not ratio. Okay, and the next equa equation, the next question is, the charge on it. So it's asking what is Q. Okay, so let's see how to do that one. So Q equals to CV. How did we get this equation? It's C equals to Q over V. I already solved for epsilon naught A over D, which means that I got the value for C. And C is equal to Q over V. If I want to find out what is the charge on it, and I know what is the voltage, I can just rearrange this equation to become Q equals to CV. Okay, so I know what is C, dah cari tadi, I know what is V, which is the voltage of the battery for 50. So just multiplying that, the unit is in coulomb. Coulomb eh, bukan capacitance, coulomb. This is coulomb, this is charge. Tadi, it was farad. This is farad. Okay, so it's easy, right? Easy, just um, manipulating the equation. The value of E between the plates. Now, this equation I have not shown you in this chapter, but for previous chapter, we talked about um, delta PE equals to QE X delta X, which is also equal to Q delta V. So... This dude is equal. So V is equal to E D. Delta X ni distance kan? Or displacement. So V is equal to E D. So if I know what is my voltage, I know what is the distance between the plates, which is the distance that the charge needs to travel, right? Assuming. So I can solve for E. Okay. So that is where this E equals to V over D comes from. Okay, remember delta PE equals to Q E X delta X minus, sorry, it's a minus. Um, <clears throat> it's just equal to, to the minus, yes, minus. Just equal to minus Q delta V. Okay, so here we can eliminate Q. So I can know what is V is equal to E. So delta V E X delta X. If I want to remove delta, this guy should be removing the delta as well. V equals to E X. X is just D. Okay. Again, it's easy just knowing the equation. So chapter 17, this part tak boleh mess up lah unless you don't remember the equations. Okay. All right. So if the example 17.2, a parallel plate capacitor has a capacitance of 600 picofarad. 
Kita ada banyak lagi soalan ke? Oh, ada lagi dua. Sorry, one, two. This is one, this is two. So, okay, after uh, we finish the examples, kita akan take a break, okay? So, please bear with me. I know, dah macam dah lama sikit kan? But, sikit lagi. So, a parallel plate capacitor has a capacitance of 600 picofarad. So, C is equal to 600 picofarad. Remember, SI unit. 600 times 10 to the minus 12 farad uh, with a charge of 0 0.52 microcoulomb. So it has a charge Q, 0 0.52 microcoulomb, which is also 0 0.52 times 10 to the minus 6 coulomb. The plates are 0 0.42 millimeter apart. So D is 0 0.42 millimeter or 0 0.42 times 10 to the minus 3 meter. Metal fold of dielectric constant 2. So fancy K is equal to 2. Find the voltage between the plates. So I, what are the equations that I know for this uh, chapter so far? C equals to Q over V. I know V equals to ED. I know C is equal epsilon naught. A over D. It's asking me what is the voltage. So I know what is Q. I know what is C. So I can use this equation. So C equals to Q over V. So just rearranging that. I know Q is equal to this guy. 0 0.52 times 10 to the minus 6. C is 600 times 10 to the minus 12. So this will give me 866.67 volt. The next one is the electric field between the plates. So I have the distance, right? I have the distance, I have the voltage, I can calculate for E. So let's see. So E equals to V over D, I know what is V from A. I know what is D, 0 0.42 millimeter. So this is milli. So this is electric field. Electric field is volts per meter. <clears throat> there is another uh, unit for electric field, which is Hmm, force meter, force meter. I think it's force times meter. I don't remember. Okay, but for now, volt per meter because this guy is in volt, this guy is in meter. So volt per meter. Senang lah kan? Ingat ini pun lagi senang. <clears throat> and then the area of each plate. So let's look at what we have. The area, we want to know what is the area. So this is the right equation to use. I know what is D, I know what is C. I have to put in the K because it's a dielectric. It's a capacitor with dielectric. I know what is K, <clears throat> so I can solve for A. So that is the equation that I should use. Yay. So K is 2. Mana 2? Oh, they rearranged. Okay. So they rearranged to solve for A. So C is 600, 0 0.42 millimeter. And then the K is 2 and the D is <clears throat> Sorry, the epsilon naught is 8.85 times 10 to minus 12. Okay, easy. So more equation je. Kind of boring as well, but it's good for your marks. <clears throat> Consider a parallel plate with capacitance C, 100 microfarad. The plate area A is 0 0.81. So C is 100 times 10 to the minus 6. A is, this is farad. <clears throat> A is 0 0.18, it's already in meter square, and the dielectric constant is K. Fancy K is 7. Calculate the separation of the plates. Now let's go over what equation that we have know so far, that we know so far. C equals to Q over V, C equals to K epsilon naught A over D, V equals to E D. Mm, so <clears throat> yeah, related to this one lah. Okay, so Q, we want to know what is the separation. Separation is D. I have C, I have A, so I have C, I have A, I have K. So I can use this equation. So K is 7, 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. A is 0 0.18. C is given as 100 times 10 to the minus 6. Easy. Strength of the electric field. So do I know what is my V? I do not know. I, I know what is my D. So I need to solve for my, is it given? 
oh sorry if a 12 volt potential difference is applied so i did not notice this one so v is given as 12. so <coughs> i know what is v i know what is d so i can solve for e okay senang senang gila tolonglah score okay equation je okay next one a certain parallel plate capacitor has plates of area a equals to 13.7 times 10 to the minus 4 meter square. Terus convert jadi meter square. Separated by a distance 1.55 times 10 to the minus 2 meter. If a material with dielectric constant of 2, fancy K is 2, exists between the plates, the potential difference of 2.5 volt is applied across them, how much charge will the plates hold? It's asking what is Q? How much energy is stored in the capacitor? So it's asking about U. So let's recap on what the equations that we know so far. U equals to 1 over 2. Q squared over, is it over C or, is it over C or V? I don't remember. Is it C or V? So it's over C. C. Okay. So it's over C. Okay, so uh, um, I just figured out a way to remember this. So Q is in, I, I remember the 1 over 2 Q squared over C. So I remember the 1 over 2 Q squared, right? And I said, okay, Q is in coulombs, right? So that's like a hint to remember the, 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 the denominator part. <clears throat> but Remember how you can remember it because I am so bad at memorizing. So that is, I need to have these little hints for me to remember. So it's 1 over 2 Q squared over C. Find out your hint. Remember the equation. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, we have Q, sorry, it's C equals to Q over V. And then we have epsilon naught, sorry, K, A over T. Okay. This point, I will be surprised if you can't remember this part. Okay, so you are much under 100 kali, cita adalah 100 kali, banyak kali lah. Okay, so it's asking you how much charge will the plates hold? I want to find Q, I have A, I have G, I have K, fancy K. So I can solve for C first, I have A, I have D, I have K, I can solve for C and then I can use this equation to find out what is Q because V is also given. So this is the first equation, this is the second equation. So let's see. We terus pakai CV. Oh, okay. So they um, substitute this equation into the into the second equation. You can do that, or you can start with this guy first, and then go to the second equation. It still works. So they cari C dulu. So C is two times eight point eight five times thirteen point seven times ten to the minus four. Divided by T. T is 1.5, 1.55 times to the minus 2. So that is it's C. And then using this value of C, use the second equation. C equals to Q over V to solve for Q. So C times V. So C is this dude over here. V is 2.5. This is our V. Okay, easy. Amount of energy stored in capacitor. So we remember, remember that we have a bunch of equations for U, Q squared over C. I have C, I have Q. You can just use it as it is. But this person used 1 over 2 QV, which is another equation for U. I don't remember those equations. So if you want to derive this equation, remember you can just use this equation, put it inside, solve however I mean, rearrange the equation however you like, but the basic equation is this guy. Okay, this is the most important equation to remember for you. Okay, the, the rest you can just substitute. Mm. Let's see if we get the same answer using the this basic one. Okay, so u is also equal to 1 over 2 q squared over so Q is 3.91 times 10 to the minus 12. 1 over 2, I need to square this, divided by C. 
C, oh, I did not calculate that. Okay, so C is 2 times 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12. times area, 13.7 times 10 to the minus four, divided by the distance is 1.55 times 10 to the minus two. Hopefully I did not do an area an error in my calculator. So it's, it's supposed to be 1.56 times 10 to the minus eight. Okay, so times two, so 3.91 times 10 to the minus 12 divided by answer. I got syntax error. Malas nak kira? Okay, pandai lah korang. 1 over 2 QV or equal to 1 over 2 Q squared over C. I hope it gets you the right answer. The same answer eh. It should be. Because it's the same equation actually. Yay, okay let's take our break. So let's come back 7 minutes from now which is 12, 19. Okay, if you have any questions, you can ask me. I'm going to still be here. Just going to take a break together. So seven minutes, eh? come back. Go to the toilet, get your food, whatever, get your drink. Does anyone have any questions for me? Oops. No questions, okay. Pause record. Okay. So C equals two. Okay, epsilon not A over D. K is two. Eight point eight five times ten to the minus twelve. A is 13.7 times 10 to the minus 4 over D is 1.55 times 10 to the minus 2. The answer is... times 10 to the minus 2. 0.56 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay, so that is in ferret. U should be equal to 1 over 2 Q squared over C. 1 over 2, what is Q? Q is 3.91. Times 10 to the minus 12 squared over C, 1.56 times 10 to the minus 14. Okay. This times 2. Then we have 3.91 times 10 to the minus 12 squared divided by answer. Four point eight eight, four point eight nine times ten to the minus ten joules. We have a base of the mean. I call Miss. Ah, that too. Yep. Two point nine one. Yep. That too. Yeah. Exponent to the C. Lah. Into C. Patutnya. Negatif dua belas. Yang ni ke? 8.85 ni ke? Ah, uh, Yang bawah sekali tu. 1.56. Oh, okay. Minus 12. Okay. So dah. Okay, betul. Thank you. Minus 12. Okay. okay. Now we get minus 12. Okay. Yay, yeah, sama.
PC recording. Okay, so we are going to continue. I hope everyone is back with their food or definitely toilet, etc. Blah blah blah. Just come back. Okay. So now we are doing the next subtopic, which is charging and discharging a capacitor. This is the part that I told you is going to be a little bit confusing. Tadi kita cakap pasal two parallel plates and there was a bunch of equations that we needed to know and it was pretty easy. In my opinion, it's easy and you should be able to score. Eh? Because tak ada pelik-pelik, tak ada like a high level of understanding because capacitor is pretty straightforward. Now we are doing the charging and discharging of a capacitor. So previously we talked about a capacitor when it is um, connected to a battery, right? So let's take a look at that. Let me make this guy smaller so that we can see all the words. Okay, so this is charging and discharging of a capacitor. Am I recording? Yes. So a capacitor consists of two parallel plates at this point. It will be surprising if you don't know this, uh, this point. Okay, two parallel plates ni wajib. The capacitor is charged by connecting it to a battery. So when you are connecting the two parallel plates to a battery, you are actually charging the capacitor. We will talk about what charging means and what discharging means. When charging a capacitor, work is done by the battery. We have also talked about this. When you are not supplying a battery, when you are not connecting the capacitor to a battery, you are not supplying any force or you are not supplying any energy for the charges to move. So the charges will stay there. But when you connect the, the plates to a battery, you are giving it energy so that the charges can move and create a potential difference. How does it create the potential difference? One plate becomes positive net charge, one plate becomes negative net charge. When you have two different net charges, net charges, you will create a potential difference and you will create electric field, which is necessary in a capacitor. Okay, so initially the plates are neutral. While charging, the charge is pulled off one plate. Okay, so we have this positive. We are going to assume this plate will be positive. This plate will be negative. So this plate will be donating. This guy will be receiving. Does not mean dia tak pemurah, but it's just going to be receiving because he needs it. So I'm going to donate this E to this dude and this dude will be receiving the E. So electrons uh, or negative charges is pulled off the first plate and dilalu dekat the wire across the battery and goes to this guy. Okay, so this guy will have a net positive one. This guy will have a net negative one. Okay, because donate one, jadi positive one. Receive negative one, you get you become negative one. We talked about this early on. So this this process occurs until uh, the capacitor reach a certain limit. Contohnya, contohnya capacitor saya punya limit is receiving and donating 10 charges. So the limit is 10. So this is the maximum capacity my capacitor can do. So this process will happen until the net becomes 10. It becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, sampai it reaches 10 and then it will stop charging because it has reached the maximum level. The maximum level depends on the capacitor. Eh? So if my, I have like a um, high-end capacitor, the maximum charge is like 50. So the charging will happen until 50 net is achieved. If my capacitor has only a maximum of 10, the charging will happen until a net of 10 is achieved. Okay, so it depends. So now, this value of maximum, the maximum charge that the capacitor can take is called Q, which is the same Q that we have seen for C equals to Q over V. This is actually the maximum, the maximum charge that a capacitor plate can take or donate. Okay? So that is the maximum. Dia akan start 1, 2, 3, 4. If my maximum is 50, it will go, this process will go on until I achieve 50. So that is what it means. Okay? So at this point, this is my maximum is equal to 50, right? So I can say, okay, so if this guy is fully charged, I can say, okay, so the Q is 50. Because I know that the 
maximum charge that my capacitor can take is 50. That That is in the data sheet, contohnya lah. Eh. So, the capacitor says, okay, I am fully charged. What is my value of charge? I can already know, oh, because you are fully charged, you should be eight, you should have a net charge of 50. Okay, so that is the first thing to know about this subtopic. Okay, fully charged capacitor depends on the um, capacitor yang kita ada lah, okay? The value depends. Okay, so that was charging. Now, how do we discharge a capacitor? So, kita disconnect the battery. Uh, when it is fully charged, we disconnect the battery. Okay, remember fully charged means a net potential positive, net potential negative. I disconnect the battery, I connect it to a resistor or a bulb. Dua-dua boleh. Dua-dua conductive. Dua-dua boleh lalukan electricity. So, boleh lah. So, uh, I connect, in this case, I connect, uh, I connect my plates to a resistor. So, what happens is that instead of previously the battery gave energy to move the charges about right now the resistor is a passive component it does not provide energy it's just passive it's just laying there it's not doing anything sebenarnya. and what happens is that this positive sorry this negative will be transferring the negatives back to the positive and you can transfer one by one by one by one. Let's say we had like a negative 50 and a positive 50 over here. So it will transfer one by one, minus 49, minus 48, minus 47. The value of net negative will decrease slowly until the value of positive charge and negative charge becomes neutral again. Okay. So we started off with fully charged. I disconnect the battery. I don't want to charge it anymore. I connect it to a resistor. Now what happens is that the negative net charge, negative net plate, the plate with the negative, sorry, the plate with the net negative charge starts giving back, kasih balik, eh? giving back the negative charge to the positive net plate. And this process happens until they achieve the same amount of positive and negative in their plates, making them neutral again. So we are back to square one. Fully discharged capacitor is neutral. So this is called discharging. Charging, kita connect dengan battery. Discharging, we connect it with something that is conductive, such as bulb or resistor. Okay. In discharging, we start with a fully charged and we end up with neutral. In charging, we start with neutral. We end up with fully charged. Okay, what does fully charged mean? It means satu positive, satu negative. Neutral means equal. Equal amount of positive and negative in the plate. Okay, so... Uh, of course, physics has to have equations and math involved in every theory. So we are we are close to the equation now. So when voltage is placed across the terminals of an uncharged capacitor, uncharged eh? uncharged means neutral. Uh, charge flows in the circuit. One plate releases negative charge and becomes net positive. We talked about this. One plate donates negative becomes positive. The other receives the negative, becomes negative. And the other plate receives negative charge and becomes net negative. As the plates become charged, a voltage is produced across them that opposes the externally applied voltage. A voltage produced across them that opposes the externally applied voltage. <clears throat> what that means is, uh, remember when we have positive and negative, we have E. And um, V is equal to ED, which means that if my E is to the right, my V is also to the right. So this is also the direction of my V. Okay, remember E is... V ni follow E lah, basically. But uh, when we connect it to a battery... <coughs> sorry. 
when I want to donate my electrons, my negative charges, I am actually going this way. Donate, right? Donating should be this way from the from the plate that we are assuming it is going to be positive in the end. So we are donating. So the charge moves this way. It moves this way, which is terbalik dengan E. That is what it means. So as the plates become charged, a voltage is produced across them that opposes the externally applied voltage. So it's just opposing the direction of the electric, the negative charge punya flow. Okay, or we call this electricity. When these two voltage have the same magnitude, the current stops and the capacitor is set to be charged. The two voltage have the same magnitude. Um, Mm, how do I see this one? The net positive V and the net negative V. How do I make this easy? Okay, I think this is not that important to understand. But remember that your Q, your C equals to Q over V. The Q will be equal on both plates, right? The net positive will be equal to the net negative in your value. So this is what you should remember. Okay, voltage ni tak apalah dulu. Okay. okay, so now we are going to the equation. I told you every theory comes with an equation in physics. Kind of sucks, but it, that is how it works. So when the switch is closed, at starting time T equals to zero, the charge is Q equals to zero. Okay, let's go back. When the switch is closed, what happens here? When the switch is closed, initially I am neutral, right? Initially I am neutral, I'm a free spirit. So I am neutral. Eh, can I literally just do new, new, neutral, right? So now I'm connecting when the switch is closed. Close ni maksudnya, uh, mula dia kat sini. Close ni maksudnya dia complete the circuit. When the switch is closed. Close ni maksudnya dia, dia complete circuit eh. Bukannya close as in tutup. Ah, tutup lah kan. Does not mean turn off. It means closing the circuit. Yes, that is what it means. So the switch is closed. In this case, the switch is closed, closing the circuit. So now, uh, when I when the switch is closed, this capacitor is connected to the battery. That is what it is happening. When we connect it to a battery, we are charging the capacitor. We talked about this. When we are charging, this process happens slowly until it reaches a maximum. So, satu, dua, tiga, empat, sampai when we reach a certain maximum. In in the previous case, we talked about the maximum as 50 charges. 50 net charges is the maximum. Contoh. So, it is going to be charging from 1 to 50 Q. Coulomb lah, contoh. It's going to be charging from 1 to, to 50 Coulomb because that is the maximum that it can take. The maximum net that it can take. Okay. So that is charging. So the graph of that charging process is from zero, okay, from zero net, zero net, eh, bukan zero charge, zero net charge to the maximum net charge. Looks like this. Okay, you start from one, two, three, four, five, sampai 50. This is your 50. You start from zero, it goes slowly up until it reaches the maximum charge that the plate can take. So this is how the graph looks like. Okay, the graph. Um, I don't know how what, how to describe this graph. So I forgot the name. This guy is exponentially decreasing. What is this guy? Forgot. Okay, so this the equation for this graph is given as Q equals to capital Q. What is capital Q? Capital Q is the maximum max dalam kurungan 1 minus e to the power of minus minus t over rc okay so what does this equation tell us okay so let's say okay, yeah, first of all this graph is q versus time the charge versus time charge in coulomb Okay, so this is a charge versus time graph. Okay, so uh, this graph actually tells me how many charges are there 
over the time that I am charging the capacitor. So let's say um, the maximum, the time to reach the maximum Q is at 10 seconds. But I want to know, hey, what is the charge of this capacitor when it is at 5 seconds? So just looking at this graph, I can't say for sure accurately what is the number of charge that the capacitor currently have. So I use this equation to know what is the amount of charge that it has at five seconds. So I use this equation, Q equals to maximum. Maximum is 50, one minus E to the minus five second over RC. R is resistor, C is the value of the capacitance. The value of resistor is in ohms, the value of capacitor is in, cap is in farad. So this guy is RC, this is usually given. So at time five second, this is whatever the answer is, that is the amount of charge that it has. And then I ask you, okay, what is the amount of charge at nine second? Nine second is not 10 second, right? So I still don't know what is the uh, amount of charge that it has. So I need to calculate 51 minus E, nine second. So minus nine over RC, RC is given. So I can know what, whatever the answer is, that is the amount of charge that I have. And then I said, okay, um, what about at 10? At 10 second, right? So at 10 second, I should be getting 50. Okay, RC, 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 should be RC. One minus one over E. Um, I need to have a good example, but basically one it will be this this part in this column in this bracket will become one minus no no one minus one one minus zero okay it will become one minus zero and it's just fifty lah so but maximum so that is Q becomes capital Q okay nanti kita akan buat example if this is a little bit confusing so this is charging okay i go from a zero remember i start with neutral which means that i have a net zero charge net zero it doesn't mean that i don't have charges it just means i have a net zero or neutral so i start from zero i increase slowly the net charges until i reach a maximum net charge so this is charging called charging okay moving on nanti kita buat example don't worry about the equation so what about discharging? Oh my God, banyaknya perkataan. So discharging is, remember, I start from fully charged. I start from fully charged. Let's look at this diagram again. I start from fully charged. I let go of charges until I become neutral or I become net zero. So let's see. So I start from fully charged, maximum Q. And I let go of my charges until I become a net zero. So this is zero. I become a neutral guy over here. At 10 seconds, I am a free spirit again. I'm not positive or negative. So I'm neutral. So this is discharging. I'm letting go of charges until I become neutral again. So I start from fully charged, maximum Q to zero. So that is the graph. So the equation is Q equals to capital Q. We still have the maximum Q here. E to the e to the power of minus T, still a minus T over RC. Tadi punya equation, this is discharging. Eh? Discharging, so charging, equation the Q equals to Q1 minus E. It's the same equation, but there's a one minus over here. Okay, so just. And you, uh, how you can remember the graph is charging, you go from zero to maximum. And discharging, you go from maximum to zero. Okay. Uh, by concept, you should already know this. Lah. Okay, so now we talk about time constant, the one that T over RC. Remember E to the minus, E to the power of minus T over RC. So RC is actually, it has a name. Okay, it has a name. So name is called time constant. The name is called time constant. What time is it? Okay, I have I have time. So time constant is equal to RC. So untuk charging and both discharging, the time constant should be the same. 
okay, because it's the same capacitor, it's in the same circuit, it will have the same resistor and the same capacitance. So the time constant for both charging and discharging will be the same. Okay, so during a charging process, we know this equation is Q equals to maximum Q, one minus E, blah, blah, blah. So this is at time T equals to tau. Sorry, I forgot to mention, this is called tau. Tau is time constant. So when T is equal to tau, which means that this guy is RC over RC, I will get E to the minus one. E to the minus one is equal to one over E. Okay. Okay, so my equation now becomes Q times one minus one over E. One over E, uh, just use your calculator. I actually don't know what the value is. Mm, how do I use my calculator to find E? Forgot. E is, where is E? Can you guys find it? What's the value of E? E is, I can't see it here. Okay, I found it. E is 2.71, I think. Okay, let's see. E is 2.718, so one divided by 2.718 is uh, 0 0.367 so one minus that is equal to 0 0.63 so with the, so e is equal to this is in your calculator eh? you don't have to memorize 2.718 where is it located um so where did i so you press shift you press shift and then it's on here ah it's this over here on this side so there's an e on natural log okay so that is where your e is the kite natural log ln okay next to the log okay so um you should know how to press the e eh, for this because nanti kena pakai dalam calculation so please take note on that so when during the charging process when time is equal to rc when time is equal to rc this equation becomes e to the minus e to the power of minus rc over rc, which means it's e to the power of minus one. e to the power of minus one is one over e, and e is two point seven one eight. One divided one divided by two point seven one eight, and then one minus that guy gives you zero point three six three q. Which means that when the, when you are asking the capacitor at time equals to rc. Okay, let's see. Let's say RC is three seconds. So, hey, capacitor, what is your charge at time three or time RC? Then the capacitor tells you, okay, the time at this, at the time at RC or the time at three seconds is equal to 0 0.63 of the maximum charge that I can have. Okay, so sometimes they tell you what is the maximum charge that you can have. Sometimes, sometimes they don't. So when they don't give you what is the value of Q, you just tell them 0 0.63 Q, which is 0 0.63 of the maximum value of charge that I can take. That is what it means. Any questions so far? Am I going too fast? Is this complicated? I don't think it's complicated. Is everyone okay so far? Everyone okay, so far? doctor. Okay. Is everyone else okay? Yes, doctor. Okay. Okay, just checking. Okay. I hope you guys still are still okay. All right. So again, I'm going to repeat myself. Time constant is equal to RC. If they tell you, okay, what is the number of charges that the capacitor has at the time constant? It means that you should substitute your T with RC or T with tau, okay? And it is should be equal to 0 0.63 of the maximum charge that the capacitor can have or 60% of its maximum. 60% is basically 63 over 100 times Q, which is 0 0.63 Q. It's the same thing. 63% is 0 0.63, okay? 
So tadi kita start from zero to the maximum Q and tau is 0 0.63 of Q. Okay, so this is zero of Q. This is, let's say one of Q. This is 0 0.9 of Q. Okay, so it's just um, a percentage value with respect to Q. What is Q? It's the maximum number of charge that the guy can take. Okay. And then we, we also have tau for discharging. It's the same thing. The equation is Q equals to capital Q E to the power of minus T over RC. So if I'm asking a discharging capacitor, hey, how many charges do you have left at time equals to RC? So what you should do is substitute T equals to RC. Let's say RC is 3. So 3 over 3 is the minus 1. So Q e to the minus 1. Remember, e to the minus 1 is equal to 1 over e, which means that this guy, no, not this guy, this guy will become Q over e. What is e? Use your calculator. So what, whatever the value of Q is, divided by the e. So 1 over e is equal to... Syntax error, yay. Kejap. 1 divided by Shift E minus 1. So that will give me 0 0.368 or 37. Okay, someone. So it will give me 3.67 Q. This is the same thing. What does it mean, 0 0.37? This is the amount of charge that the capacitor has. When I ask the capacitor, hey, what's your charge at? the time constant. Okay, so it's, it basically means 37% of the maximum. Charging and discharging has the different has a different value of charge, the cut time constant. Okay, so discharging, the cut time constant value is 0 0.37. For charging, the value is 0 0.63. Do you have to memorize the number uh, you can, but you don't have to. You just have to substitute um, RC over RC, which is just, you need to remember this equation, but remembering what is the charge at the time constant, you don't have to. You just have to plug in RC into the equation to get it, okay? Provided that you remember the initial equation lah. Kalau tak ingat, tak boleh nak tolong. Okay, so <clears throat> in a circuit with small time constant, Okay, time constant equals to RC. When it is small, let's say it's one second, the capacitor charges or discharges very quickly. So, um, mm, how do I make sense of this? Uh, versus time constant when it is big, it is 10. Okay, so it takes a, a longer time to discharge or charge quickly. We can make sense of it using the equation, but I'm not sure if that is very intuitive for you, but it, it is intuitive for me. But yeah, I'm not sure if it's going to help you. So charging, right? Charging, when we have uh, charging, this is the equation for charging. It is Q equals to capital Q, one minus E to the minus T over RC. Now let's say if we have an RC of one versus an RC of 10, right? So if I, um, so RC is one versus RC that is 10. Okay, so this is one. This is Q equals to Q one minus E over T over 10. So this is when the RC is greater. This guy is when the RC is smaller. So here, we know that when the time is equal to the constant, the value, okay, when time is equal to RC, or in this case, one, the Q, the charge is 0 0.67 of the maximum Q. Okay, we know this. Sama juga kat sini, if T is equal to RC or in this case 10, the value of charge in the capacitor is 0 0.67 of the maximum charge that it can take. Okay, but in this case, it takes one second, takes one second to reach 0 0.67 of the maximum charge, whereas in this second 
scenario, it takes 10 seconds to achieve 0 0.67 of the maximum charge. So here we can say that to achieve, let's say the Q is the same, eh? to achieve the same amount of charge, this dude takes one second, whereas the second capacitor takes 10 seconds to achieve the same amount of charge. With that said, this guy charges very quickly and this guy charges slowly because they take more time to achieve the same amount of Q. Okay, so again, if they ask you compared to a capacitor with time constant uh, 5 versus a time constant of 50, which capacitor will have a slower charging time? Slower, eh? So a slower charging time is related to a high time constant. And a fast charging time is related to a small time constant. That is how they can ask you about that. Okay, is that clear for everyone? Oh. Yeah, so it's just making sense of the equation. And ultimately, you need to remember small time constant, cepat, dia jadi laju. Time constant is in seconds. So smaller second, laju. More seconds, lambat. You don't have to use the equation, just remember that it's fine. So uh, this is an exercise, example 17.4, resistor. So we have R is equal to 500 K. K is times 10 to the minus, or times 10 to the 3. Connected in series with a capacitor of 15 microfarad. So we have, wow, buruknya. Mm, resistor looks like this, capacitor looks like this. Okay, they are connected in series. Capacitor looks almost like battery, tapi they have the same length. Because why? Two plates. Remember, we have two plates. That is uh, the symbol for a capacitor in a circuit. Whereas battery, macam ni. Positive, negative. Okay, terbalik. Not terbalik, uh, lain. Okay, so a resistor connected in series with a capacitor of 50, 15 microfarad. So that value C is... 15 microfarad. Remember, time constant is equal to RC, which means that you can immediately calculate for the time constant. Um, and has charges of 50 microcoulomb. So it's saying that this dude has a charge of 50 microcoulomb, which is the maximum Q that it can have. So Q is 50 microcoulomb. Okay, penting eh? soalan ni, you need to understand how to understand the question. So, a resistor R, capacitor is C, time constant is RC. Has charges of 50 microcoulomb. It's giving you the maximum amount of Q or capital Q. What is the charging time constant for that capacitor? So, tau is equal to RC, 500 times 10 to the 3 ohms times 15 times 10 to the minus 6 farad. So this will give you a value in seconds because time constant, it's time, 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 eh? time is in seconds. Okay, moving on, calculate the charge induced on the capacitor, charge induced on the capacitor at time t equal to 10 seconds. So it's asking what is the amount of Q in relation to, yeah, it's asking you what is the Q lah. So tadi is talking about charging time, which means that we need to go for the charging equation. So the charging equation is Q, capital Q, 1 minus E minus T over RC. What time is it? Okay, we have seven minutes. Let's finish this example. And then I know what is the maximum charge that I should have in my capacitor is 50 microcoulomb times 10 to the minus 6. 1 minus E. It's asking at time 10 equals, sorry, time 10 seconds minus 10 over RC. R is 7.5 seconds. So second over second, cancel out, doesn't matter really. Um, so you need to use your calculator for this one. So E shift natural log gives you E dalam kurungan minus 
10 over 7.5. Okay, so that is minus 10 over 7.5. My one minus answer times with 50. Sorry, kita start dulu. Eh, hello. So that is 0 0.73. So I just calculated for the guy in the bracket 1 minus e to the power of minus 10 over 7.5 gives me 0 0.73. Okay, so if they did not give you the value of q, this equation will just become q times 0 0.73. And you can give your answer at time 10 equals to at time t equals to 10 second. The capacitor has has achieved 0 0.73 of the maximum number of charges of the or the maximum Q. So, but we know what Q is, so let's just substitute that. 50 times 10 to the minus 6 times 0 0.73. Okay, so that is 50 times 10 to the minus 6. So it has, why do I keep getting math error? Oh, so what kind of tambah? Oops, betul ini. Okay, betul. So, 3.68. So, sama. 3.68 times 10 to the minus 5 coulomb. Remember, the maximum amount of charge that the capacitor can have is 50 micro coulomb. This guy baru achieve 3.68. Which is more. Kejap. Oh, tak, sorry. It's not more. So this guy will become 36.8 times 10 to the minus 6. So dia baru 36.8 microcoulomb, whereas the maximum is 50. So it has, it needs more time to be fully charged. Okay. Habis Oh, I do one more. Hey, one more je. Okay, sorry. What time is it? Okay, I have four minutes. Okay, I'm going to do this fast. So the time constant of a capacitor is four. So tau equals to four. Find the time to charge a capacitor to 90% of its maximum voltage. So this is voltage. 90% of its maximum voltage. So we have C equals to Q over V. I'm going to check voltage, eh? Maximum charge, patutnya. Sekejap, let me see the solution. This is charge. Hmm. I'm going to change the question. Does it make sense? Okay. Okay, let's move on. So time constant equals to 4. Find the time to charge capacitor to 90% of its maximum charge. Okay, I'm going to change it to make it easier. Voltage ni next time lah kalau ada soalan macam tu. So 0 0.9 Q. So it's asking you what is the time to achieve 0 0.9 Q when you are charging. So Q equals to capital Q 1 minus E to the minus T over RC should be equal to 0 0.9 Q. So that is what the question is saying. So we have Q on both sides. I can cancel this out. So 1 minus E to the minus T over RC is equal to 0 0.9. So time constant, I already know this. So this should be 4. So I just need to solve for T. So here, Q cancel out with Q. 0 0.9 is equal to 1 minus minus t over 4. So it's just math. 1 minus 0 0.9 is equal to e to the minus t over tau. To eliminate e, you need to uh, natural log both. So ln e. Sorry. Oh, macam ni kena ajar math. Okay, ln e minus t tau equals to ln 1 minus 0 0.9. Okay, so to eliminate E, 
you need to put in natural log. I don't know if you still remember about this math. To eliminate E, you need to have your natural log. Okay, so what, what, what I typically do is I just do like this. So LN, LN, LN 0 0.1, this guy is eliminated when natural log is there. So I am left with minus T over tau. Okay, so LN 0 0.1, that's easy. Just use your calculator. Don't have to memorize anything. LN 0 0.1 is equal to minus 2.3. Okay, and then times with tau. You know tau is 4. So tau uh, minus 2.3 times 4. This guy becomes negative sebab benda Allah ni negative. So negative with negative, positive. 2.3 times 4 is 9.2. Okay. I wouldn't say it's easy. But um, it's, do it's doable if you understand the concept, okay? So here again, to eliminate E, use natural log. Kalau tak ingat, Google. Benda tu senang je patutnya. Okay, so that is it for today's class. Did I go overboard? No, it's uh, exactly at one. I'm so proud of myself. Okay, so take care everyone. The... Topic today that we learned today, charging and discharging, is for your lab tomorrow. So if you don't understand, please revise. Okay, so I will be uploading the video as usual. Uh, and take care, stay safe. If, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Okay, so bye bye. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, doctor. Bye. Thank you, doctor. Have a great rest of the doctor. day. Doctor. Bye. Thank you, doctor. Welcome. You. You're right there. Mm -mm. Hi. You guys have any questions? That's it. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.